Hi everyone, I'm Simona from Vector Twist, and welcome to today's tutorial where we're going to create a grass brush for our isometric designs. It's really simple to set up a grass brush and actually use it for your isometric designs. And this brush is not set up isometrically, but you can draw in the isometric perspective. Now here in Illustrator, I have a base shape already, and I'm also going to turn on my isometric grid. Now I've created tutorials before on how to create your isometric grid. If you haven't watched them, please do so now. The link is in the description. I have two, one where you can create your isometric pattern and another one where you can create an isometric grid out of just one single line. Now before we get started, take a moment to hit the subscribe button and the bell to get updates on the release of new Vector Twist tutorials. And with that said, let's get started. Now in order to create our grass brush, we don't need the grid for now, but the grid can be helpful when you start drawing your elements for your grass. So let's turn it off again. And then let's open up the swatches panel and then let's create our grass brush. Now I'm going to move over my base and then we're going to create the element that we need for our brush. So change the fill to a green. I'm going to just simply use the green I have here in the swatches panel, then select the rectangle tool and then create a small long rectangle approximately this size i have the smart guides on right now if you don't have them on go under view and then turn on smart guides and then with the direct selection tool we're going to select the top anchor points then we're going to average them out so under object path choose average and then make sure select both and then hit okay now we want to remove one point because now we have two points falling right on top of each other. So select the pen tool and then hover over the point. You'll get the minus sign and then click once. This will remove the extra point. After that, let's zoom in a little bit. We're going to cut this shape into half. The easiest way is just to create a line. So set the fill to the stroke, choose the pen tool. Since I'm working with the smart guides, I can place it in the center and then just hold and press the shift key to create a straight line to the top. How thick it is, it doesn't really matter. Then select both, open up the Pathfinder panel, and then choose Divide. Now we've cut the shape into half. The shape is grouped right now, leave it as is, and then with the Direct Selection tool, select the right side of the shape and give it a lighter green. I'm just going to choose the one that falls right next to my darker green I just picked. Then we want to round out the bottom corners a little bit. So select with the Direct Selection tool, one of the corners, then press and hold the shift key, and then select the other side. Now, if you have your corner widgets on, you'll see the tiny circles, and then you can round it out. If you don't see them, just go under view and make sure you show the corner widgets. So let's just pull them a little bit. Not too much, we just want to round it out a little bit. Now we're ready to add them to our brush panel. So open up the brush panel, Select the shape that we've just created and then hit the plus button. It says new brush and then in the new brush pop-up window, choose art brush and then click OK. Now we have another window popping up, the art brush options. Give it a name, I'm going to call it grass. For the width, I keep it fixed. The brush scale options, I select stretch to fit stroke length. And then for direction, I would like to actually choose stroke from bottom to top and not top to bottom because I'll be drawing from the bottom up. The key color leave as is. Later on, I'll show you how you can change that and then choose any color for your stroke when you work with a brush. And then press OK. Now in the brushes panel, your brush will show up. Now we're ready to add grass to our tile. So I'm going to move these things out of the way and then let's add some grass. So make sure that your fill is set to none and your stroke is to the front and then select the brush from the brush panel. Use the brush tool in the toolbar and then start adding your grass on top of our tile. Now you can turn back on the grid if you have it. That might help you to create your lines. Since we have a base shape, it'll give us quite the direction where to place our grass pieces. So simply from the bottom to the top, add some strokes. And you can see now you can create your grass. Just build it up how you like it. For example, just like that. Now, in order to close it off on the bottom, I would like to have grass pieces go along my edge of my tile. 
But if I draw now just a piece like this, and then one on the other side, you can see they don't match. So let me delete this. I would like to have a piece of grass just on the bottom, just straight over, and then have one on the other side that matches with the darker green and then the lighter green. But this doesn't happen if I choose my brush. Let me show you again. If I draw a straight line, it's offset. Now we can either expand the brush and then reflect it, or we can actually create a copy of our brush. Now all we have to do is select the brush, make sure you have nothing else selected, and then drag it onto the plus sign. Now this has created a copy of it. You'll see it says grass copy, and then we can just double click it. We can call it reflect, and then for the options on the bottom here, choose flip across. So select this and then press OK. Now since nothing was selected, it will not apply it to anything. Now when you go back and select your path with the first brush, just make sure that you switch to the second brush. And now it has reflected it because we've chosen the option to flip it across. Now when we zoom in, we can move our elements around and then have them match much better. You can move elements to the front, you can move them to the back, and this way you can create your grass for your isometric designs. Now you can add just a few more strokes to it, and then just make sure that the bottom ones are on top. So I'm going to put it to the front, and then maybe change the stroke width from 1 point to 0 0.75. Maybe bring this to the front too, and that's it. Now you can actually group this all together, and then you have to one part. Now you can make copies of it and build up your tile or add it to any other designs. For example, in one of the tutorials, we created an isometric boulder. Let me show you what it looked like. So here's the boulder that we've created. And then you could just create a copy of the grass that you've just created and then place it in front. Now, if you would like to tweak it a little bit, just select it. And then with the free transform tool, when you grab one of the corners and then press and hold the command or control key, you can actually stretch it out and then move it much better into place. And then of course you can build it up. You can create copies in front, make some a little bit smaller, and this way you can build up your grass patch. But there's something else I would like to show you too. I would like to show you how you can create with this grass a symbol and then build it up much faster. Now let's move this out of the way. All we have to do is select the grass that we've just created and then open up the symbols panel. I'll drag it out. You can delete all of the symbols that you don't need, so I'm going to select all unused and then just delete them. Then I'm going to select my grass and then I'm going to hit the plus button. I'll get the symbols option, so let's call it grass. You can leave it as movie clip, you can set it as graphic, it doesn't really matter. If you want to change it later on, keep it as a dynamic symbol and then press OK. Now I'm going to move away my grass. Let me close things here so it's a little bit cleaner. So we have a grass brush, we created a copy of it, and then we created a simple out of what we've created, our little grass patch. Now make sure you have nothing selected. Then click on the symbol, and then we're going to use the symbol sprayer. So in the toolbar, select the symbol sprayer tool, and then double click it. You probably have to bring the diameter down, so let's set it to 100 pixels, and then press OK. And then you can start spraying the symbol all over your isometric tile. So watch what happens. I can just spray it and then fill it up. Now, of course, it's bigger than my tile now. What I can do now is I can switch from the symbol sprayer tool to the symbol cruncher tool. And then I can make them go closer together, my symbols. And as you can see, I can build up my grass for my isometric tile really, really fast. If I need to add more, I'm just going back to the symbol sprayer tool, and then I'm going to add symbols in between. And I'm just going to build it up. If I have a little gap in between, I'll go back to the symbol cruncher tool and then close it together so I don't have a gap. And then let's move it on top of our tile. Of course, there is a little bit more we have to do now to make it fit to our tile. We can choose the symbol shifter tool and then shift them closer together on our tile. Basically, you're just pushing the symbols into the position that you need them to. And this works really well because we have our base shape and then we're just going to place them into the position we need them. There's no real science behind it, just make sure that it fits nicely so you don't see any gaps. Some can be overhanging. If you need, go back to the simple cruncher tool 
and make it all a little bit tighter together, or just simply add more symbols to it with the symbol sprayer tool. And then we can just move it into place. We just have to shift it a little bit around. You could also be working with the symbol spinner tool. This will spin the symbols around, which makes it all a little bit more dynamic for your grass. And maybe we want to actually crunch them a little bit together on the bottom. And we could also use the symbol sizer tool. And if you would click on it once, you can see it makes it bigger. I'm going to undo this. If you actually want to shrink down the symbols themselves, press and hold the optional Alt key and then click once on the area where you would like to shrink them down, for example, in the front. And then I'm just going to shrink them down a little bit. And if I want to have them a little bit bigger, I just click once and then they get a little bit bigger. But I don't think I'll need that. I'm just going to use the shifter tool again and then just move them a little bit around. And then maybe in the front, have them just a little bit bigger. So back to the symbol sizer tool and then press slightly once on the front to make it bigger and then back to the shifter tool and then move them into place. And this way you can create an isometric grass tile. Now one last thing I want to show you. Just because you picked the original green colors for your brush doesn't mean that it has to stay like that. You can easily change that. And for example, if I want to choose any kind of other green, maybe something a little bit more warmer, I can do so. But first we have to create a copy of our original grass. So just select it and then drag it on top of the plus sign. This will create a copy. Double click it and then we're going to give it a new name. Let's call it grass any color. And then from the key color, from the colorization, we're going to choose method, tints and shades. And then simply press OK. Then I'm going to select a new color for my stroke and then select the brush called grass any color. And then with the paintbrush tool, I'm going to create more grass pieces. And then watch what happens. We have now a different grass color. And then you can build this up again into your grass. And if I don't like this color, I can just select it and then choose another green or any other color in my swatches panel. Let's make some copies so you can see what you can create out of it. Maybe something even lighter or something even funky like a purple or pink. And all we had to do, let me just show you again, change the colorization method from none to tints and shades. And that's it with this tutorial. I'll see you next time.